Hey, what YouTube is Casper Swords, my Wall Simon. Today, we're going to react to the harsh truth about the go to bait. Um, Lakers didn't make the playoffs. But before the season, I, I knew they weren't going to win a ring. I definitely didn't think they weren't going to make playoffs, bro. Like, I like I knew Westbrook's not that good, 80 injury prone. I expected more from Melo, I can't lie. And then they didn't bring back Caruso. Like, there's too many what ifs. Like, what if Westbrook played bad and he played bad? Um, let's just go to the end of the video. We're almost at 1K subscribers, so if you could, you know, spam the subscribe button, spam the like button, spam the comment button, you lit. It's never going to end, is it? LeBron's reign over the NBA. I've just come to the conclusion that LeBron has hacked into the Matrix and has transcended aging. LeBron is in his 19th NBA season and is somehow still... One of the best players on the planet. Okay, good, good this thing for saying one of the best. One of the best. Ninety-nine percent of NBA players peak in their mid to late twenties and then slowly regress as they age, eventually becoming a liability to their team and inevitably sailing off into the sunset, washed up and content with their achievements. But not LeBron. The man is fighting his age like he's got a grudge on time itself. And the more he piles up on these mind-bending feats, the more we must ask ourselves the question. And I really hate to do this. But is LeBron the greatest basketball player of all time? And if he isn't, what would he need to do to truly, once and for all, be the GOAT? I, I knew he was a GOAT since uh, since the 3-1 comeback. The, 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 the ring you wanted for the Lakers doesn't count. That's About five ring. years ago, I uploaded my first basketball-related video onto this channel. The title of that video is LeBron the GOAT. You can still watch this video today, but since it's an absolute dog water of a production, I highly recommend you steer clear of it. To summarize the video, I gave 10 reasons why LeBron would retire as the GOAT. Fast forward five years and thousands of hours of watching games, collecting data, and gathering context in this sport that we love. I've since changed my ways and realized that Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time. But my original assessment from five years ago hasn't completely changed because I never said LeBron was the GOAT at the time. I just gave 10 reasons why LeBron would retire as the GOAT. But ever since I dropped that video, I've pretty much avoided the GOAT conversation altogether. I've put a spin on the idea of the greatest players in certain aspects of the game. I've talked about the greatest scores. I've ranked players using purely numbers, but I've never really broken down who the greatest player is, in my opinion, it's LeBron. because I just feel like the topic is a bit redundant and ESPN already gives you a daily update on the GOAT debate anyways so no need for me to do it but it is opinion, I think though. it's time if you think George to actually is okay. discuss this because what LeBron is doing at this point in his career is just absurd at the moment, there are pretty much three different camps on the whole GOAT debate. People who think Michael Jordan is the GOAT, people who think LeBron is the GOAT, and people who are wrong. I'm just joking, of course. But not, not joking. I'd say about 75% of people fall into the MJ's the GOAT category. About 20% of people fall into the LeBron's the GOAT category. And about 5% fall into the other category. Usually these other fans believe the GOAT is Wilt or Kobe. Yeah, I think this is disrespectful. Wilt, yes. Kareem, yes. Uh, Larry Bird over Kobe Bryant. Or Kareem. There's not many of them, but boy, will they die on that hill. See, the thing Kobe here is that a lot of the fans in MJ's corner believe that just he another is version and of MJ. will forever be the GOAT. But realistically, is there anything LeBron can do to surpass him? I mean, there's got to be some sort of objective metric we can use to distinguish the greatest player of all time. No opinions, no bias, just the facts. If LeBron somehow won four more championships and retired with eight rings, he'd undoubtedly be the GOAT, right? So there are paths for him to become the greatest ever, but where does that threshold lie? And what would LeBron have to achieve to get there? I love LeBron, man. Uh, uh. Uh, First, uh, let's uh, just take a look at the basic numbers. Between Michael and LeBron, LeBron has more career points, rebounds, assists, blocks, more triple doubles, higher field goal percentage, and a higher three point percentage. And Michael has more steals and a higher free throw. I'm sorry, but this doesn't necessarily okay. Does okay? I'll tell you the stats that matter: points, assists, TDs. What? Touched? Okay. Field goal percent, they're close. These are pretty close, so this doesn't really matter. Only assists and points matter out of these, in my opinion. 
but and I, this free throws are important too, so LJ wins the on that. career totals argument is only useful in demonstrating LeBron's longevity and sustained excellence. Yeah, yeah exactly. He's, he's been playing longer. LeBron's a better scorer or rebounder or defender or shooter than Jordan. They just prove that LeBron's been good at these things for a very very long time yeah these numbers also show just how versatile lebron is possibly his most valuable asset so instead of looking at career totals let's look at career averages michael averages more points and more steals and lebron averages more assists and more rebounds and as much as it okay. pains me to say this this is usually where the argument for the goat ends for most people throw in a required comment about their finals records and you pretty much have a condensed version of most goat debates but there is so much more to unpack here. Yeah. So let's unpack it. So y'all know how much I like advanced stats. They don't tell the full story, but if you know which ones to look for, you can discover some nuances in a player's game that you won't get by just watching them play. Player efficiency rating, win shares per 48, offensive box plus minus, defensive box plus minus, value over replacements, and true shooting percentage. These six advanced I have stats no clue what they give mean. us efficiency, production, value, impact, and pretty much everything in between. And in these six advanced statistics, Michael Jordan exceeds LeBron in five of them. He's more efficient overall. He contributes to more wins. He contributes to more points. He's better on defense. And he is generally more valuable on the court than LeBron is. The only advanced stat... Damn. They're close, man. But yeah, better is better. I'm bottom top Jordan I'm, is true shooting percentage. Now, in terms of who's a I still know the stats basketball though. player, nearly every metric points to Michael Jordan. But really take a look at these numbers, and it's actually uncanny just how close LeBron is to MJ across the board. Just a fraction behind Jordan in pretty much everything. Like it's close, but, but these like numbers you have to give it to MJ because it's greater. Because that conversation would involve accolades and accomplishments and impact on the game. Take away the rings, the influence, the intangibles, the opinions, and it's virtually objectively true that Michael was a better basketball player than LeBron. But no. the GOAT debate isn't necessarily about who is the better player. It's about who is the greatest player. We've got some more unpacking to do. Michael Jordan probably. That's fine. Now, we cannot have a thorough GOAT debate without discussing the accomplishments of each player. Numbers are cool and they have their purpose, but numbers alone aren't indicative of greatness. They're just a vehicle to greatness. This is why, despite James Harden spending half a decade piling up some of the greatest scoring numbers in NBA history, most people don't That's consider my favorite him NBA player, some man. players with far lesser offensive That's my goal. The God! complement the accolades, not the other way around. This is also why I consider Wilt Chamberlain to have been a better basketball player than Bill Russell, but Bill Russell was greater than Wilt. Wilt achieved his greatness through his numbers, whereas Russell achieved his greatness by contributing to an unrelenting style of winning basketball. So let's take a look at the accomplishments of both Michael Jordan and LeBron James. Now there are plenty of other awards a player can earn in the NBA, but these are the ones that really stand out on a player's resume. Championships, finals MVPs, regular season MVPs, defensive player of the year, all NBA selections, and all defensive team selections. And amongst these six categories, Jordan beats LeBron in five of them. And Michael accomplished all of this in just 15 seasons to LeBron's full 18 seasons. The only category where look Okay. You understand this? Okay, let me explain why this let me explain why this is flawed. LeBron should have like eight to ten MVPs, and you Jordan fans know this. LeBron has been playing at an MVP level his whole career. He just you know, because he's LeBron, he didn't win the, all those MVPs. Um LeBron has been playing he said LeBron has been playing 19, 18 years and he has 17 while LeBron, Jordan has been playing 15. Okay, let's excuse the Wizards. Okay, let's say that's 14. Only having, no, I don't know why I'm saying only, but he, having 11 all NBAs, it should be higher. You know, all defense, okay, you give it to the, Michael Jordan's obviously a better defender, DPOY, finals MVPs. Like, he, LeBron's, it's, the final MVP goes to the winner of the finals, understandable, but LeBron has been the final MVP every single time he's been in the finals, except for the Kevin Durant one. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying, 
LeBron should have more MVPs. Outperformed Michael. And you guys know this. All NBA selections. And most will argue that, again, this is an accomplishment of longevity more than anything else. Which, at this point, seems to be the overall theme in the GOAT debate. Up to this point in his career, the majority of fans will agree that LeBron has been a step below Jordan in terms of greatness. So now the race to become the GOAT has become a marathon. Because eventually, the sheer volume of LeBron's career numbers and achievements may become so overwhelming that we'll have no choice but to concede that he is, in fact, the greatest player of all time. Which brings us to a real I don't agree with that either. Like, even as someone that supports debate. LeBron, like, MJ doing it in a short amount of time does, you know, give it to MJ, man. The flame that burns twice as bright burns half as long. A great quote by the ancient Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu regarding the idea of excellence and the sustainability of it. Almost as if you can have longevity or be exceptional, but you can't have both. Now, in the world of basketball well, and sports in general, usually being exceptional translates to longevity and vice versa. Michael Jordan was excellent for 13 seasons in the NBA. His flame was violently bright and it burned for quite some time. But what if there was a flame that burned about 95% as bright and lasted much, much longer? At a certain point, the radius Bice. of even the brightest flame is outclassed by the flame that just won't quit. Of course, LeBron isn't a flame. He's a six foot nine inch, 250 pound freak of nature in basketball shoes, but his- You would dominate in the fucking 80s, six foot nine, 250 pounds. Come on. Light shines about you know 95% doing the as bright as Michael Jordan's did, and it's lasting a whole lot longer. When does the longevity of LeBron's brilliance simply outmatch the slightly greater but much shorter brilliance of Michael? I feel bad for Because as we discussed, Mike trumps LeBron in pretty much every single metric other than longevity and overall production. So the real question here is how much longer will LeBron have to be excellent before the majority agrees that he is greater than Michael was? The man is in his 19th NBA season and he's leading the he's gonna NBA be all, he's in gonna be scoring. All NBA he's today. still a top five NBA, player in the league great. and his bag is getting deeper and deeper with every season. Here's a chart of LeBron's total points, assists, and rebound averages throughout each season of his career. Each point on the graph represents the total average of points, assists, and rebounds for every season of his career. So, for example, this season LeBron is putting up 8, 6, and 30 a game, so his total for the season is 44. Now, in the NBA, anything above a total of 40 is exceptional. LeBron's total production has exceeded 40 in 17 different seasons. Now here's Michael's total average points, assists, and rebounds for every season of his career. This is by far the greatest argument in favor of LeBron in the GOAT debate. The man has actually, simply- Actually, 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 shut up for a second. This is insane. This right here is insane. But this is like, this is him, this is when he averaged like 30, 30 something, right? Uh, or like, he had, he had a high average, but yeah, yeah. Just because it is longer and like not all of MJ seasons where you know greatness. Okay, this this is a favorite of LeBron, but I'm just saying, this right here from MJ is crazy. It's crazy. The excellence for longer than Mike did. And although the numbers are just a vehicle to greatness, there has got to be a point where the numbers are just too glaring to ignore. LeBron's numbers are getting to that point. But some fans will argue that there were other players that were still really good this late in their career. You mean like Kareem or Kobe? Or Carl Malone, they weren't even close. LeBron's already oh the only God. player to be part of the 30K, 10K, 10K. Dude, that's, that's insane. That's Aside insane. from a freak injury, he'll undoubtedly break Kareem's scoring record. He'll probably play the most seasons in an NBA career. He already has the record for most All NBA selections, and he's still adding to what is probably the longest career highlight reel with moments like this. If LeBron is still doing this in a couple years while still putting up all NBA numbers, I really think it's going to be difficult to say that he's not the greatest player ever. He's my go man. Oh, never mind. Six for six, yeah, yeah. You know what? Cool. I'm just gonna say it. While LeBron's legacy is growing as he plays more seasons, Michael's legacy would have been slightly diminished if he played more seasons. Okay, course, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Okay, listen. That's why, okay, that's okay. That's that's the why I am for. That's the only reason I'm for the longevity argument is because if Michael Jordan kept on playing, his career would have went downwards. That's the only reason. But because his career was shorter, 
you know, it was really perfect. It was really good. Even on the Wizards, he was still good. He still averaged love, but the w Wizards were like a uh, 10th or 11th seed, I think I'm remembering. But I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, that's the only thing. Longevity does not matter to me in that case, but only in the case of if you're comparing them. If MJ kept his career going, he would have been averaging like 12 points per game, bro. Matter of fact, but all the evidence points towards this assumption. Michael Jordan retiring after playing just 13 NBA seasons in 1998 was the best thing he could have ever done for his legacy. The Bulls were not going to win another championship, and the backbone of the dynasty he had built had all but vanished by the beginning of the 1999 season. If he had played through that three-year retirement gap from 1999 to 2001, he would have either stayed with the Bulls and put up huge numbers on a losing team, or signed with a different team and chased rings. Both options being far less illustrious than him going out on top with the team that drafted him. Michael's career was the perfect there we story. Go. He was drafted by a franchise that was ready and willing to build around him. He was on a roster that suited his skill sets extremely well. And he and the Bulls peaked right the as the dominant good. teams from the 80s and early 90s, like the Lakers, Celtics, and Pistons, began to fade away. You could yes. not have written... Yes, 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 yes. Holy sh... You guys are not understanding, bro. This The whole argument is, as Michael Jordan came into the league, other teams were on decline. LeBron has been in the league so long, we've seen teams go up and down, up and down, up and down. We've seen LKC, we've seen Houston, we've seen San Antonio, we've seen the Warriors. We're now seeing the Suns, bro. Like, oh, we, we're freaking with the Clippers, with the Raptors. We've seen so many teams go up and down, up and down, up and down, bro. Like, come on. Better career if you tried. On the other hand, despite his success, LeBron really got the short end of the deal many times throughout his career. He spent his first seven seasons in the NBA playing for a team that could not have cared less about building a coherent team around him. He spent four straight finals going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the most dominant dynasty in modern NBA history outside of Jordan's Bulls. While Michael was surrounded by players who were all willing to buy into their system, LeBron has spent many years carrying the load of bad rosters and seemingly incompetent this is my teams. God, this is my part of God. which is his own fault for trying to play GM and putting together piss-poor rosters. And I bring up these small nuances because the GOAT debate is very nuanced. As much as people want to act like the whole 6-0 in the finals is the end-all be-all to the discussion, it's just not. If rings were all that mattered, then Bill Russell would but be what the I'm Oh, but he played oh a long time God. ago. That doesn't count. Okay, well then Robert Ory is the GOAT because he has seven rings to Jordan's six. Well, yeah, but Ory wasn't the best player on any of those championships. Okay, so is the argument about rings, or is it about being the best player on the court, or a mixture of both? Is a player's performance, despite how masterful it was, all in vain if his team loses? The line becomes- Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, there we go, bro. There we go. You guys are arguing that, oh, my good, like LeBron didn't get a ring. He was hooping every single final series. LeBron, it's not like LeBron falls asleep in the playoffs. LeBron in the playoffs is still a fucking hooper. Come on. Come on. Less and less clear. It's the never his fault. Oh, I can't say it's no never his fault. It's loses, bro. But... to determine this debate. And the unpacking of every small, minute detail is a necessary burden. But unfortunately, it's a burden that most fans won't bother to take on. At the moment, I personally believe Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time. I also think he's the best basketball player of all time. But, unlike some fans, I don't think the door has closed on LeBron. I think that if LeBron can continue to dominate the league for a few more seasons and continue to shatter our previous notions of what we thought was possible in a single NBA career, I think that he has a chance to retire as the greatest player a of all time. A chance is crazy. But of course, only time will tell. And fortunately for LeBron, time seems to perpetually be on his side. I love you, LeBron. Um, yeah, I should have. I, I feel like just editing it out and just posting the end of the video because the end of the video is the only thing that matters to me personally. Um, yeah, bro. The GOAT debate, I'm sorry, bro. If you guys think Michael Jordan is the GOAT, that's okay, man. Like, I, I'm not going to argue with you. I really don't care. I do not care. I think LeBron's the GOAT. And you think MJ's the GOAT? Will MJ and LeBron play on the same era? No. Would MJ still do good in this era? Yes. Will LeBron do good in MJ's era? Yes. Will Le would MJ beat the Warriors? Fuck no. Fuck no.